Welcome to the Navy SEAL Mindset. I'm your host, William Branham. In this episode, I'm gonna to talk to you about this thing I was struggling with not that long ago, just a couple weeks ago. It was called entitlement. And it's one of the things that I hate more than almost anything else in this world. And I'll share with you really quickly what I was dealing with. I went out and did something that was really hard, very gratifying, but very hard. And I came back from that event and I was like, oh, okay, I'll take a, the day off. And then the next day, oh, I'm going to take the day off again. And then the third day, I was like, I'm going to take the day off. And then I caught myself. What are you doing? It's like those people who did something once upon a time. They worked out really hard or they did something and they think they deserve dessert. That thing they did was seven years ago. They're still eating like they earned it today. That's the kind of entitlement that I'm talking about. Or previous episodes, I've talked about doing the work. Doing those small things and expecting no gratitude from anyone. Just do it. And in 10 years, you'll be an overnight success. That's what I'm talking about. Do the work. When you are entitled, when you're like, oh, I earned this. I deserve that. Then what are you doing? You don't deserve anything. You haven't earned anything if you didn't actually do the work. And you have to do it every single day. The event I'm talking about that was a, a, a very epic event was the Navy SEAL swim across the Hudson River. This was the, let's see, 2023. This was the fifth year that they did the swim and the third year that I did it. The first year I did it was the second year of the swim. I did it the second and third year. I didn't do it last year. Only because, only because two days later, I was climbing the Grand Teton. When I got out of the swim this year, I was like, I felt pretty good. I was like, oh yeah, I could go do climb the Grand Teton. The next morning when I woke up, I was like, there's no way I would have made it up the Grand Teton. That was a very, very hard climb. So I didn't do it last year. I did it this year. So this was my third out of five years doing it. I'll probably continue to do it every year. Again, this is a fundraiser. The event is, it starts early in the morning, generally, one year it didn't, but it start, usually starts early in the morning. There's a bunch of media stuff. You, this year we had 270 people sign up for the event, 270 people. Of those 270 people, I think 54 of them were actually Navy SEALs. There was probably another like 20 veterans, boat guys that are in the Naval Special Warfare community then the Army Rangers, Green Berets, other veterans, other first responders that all showed up to support and swim across the Hudson River. One year, we, we've had some Olympians come out and, and join the, the swim with us. So we start off the event at, I think it's Open Skies Park in New Jersey. We, we take a bunch of flag, American flags. We run down the boardwalk down to, I believe, Liberty Park, which is right across from the Statue of Liberty. We put our flags away. We change out of our sneakers. We grab our fins and our mask and our buoys because safety first. And when we're supposed to, we jump in the water and we swim, in, we swim to a barge that's about a mile away that's out in front of the Statue of Liberty. We get out at that barge. We climb up a ladder, two pull-ups and 100 push-ups. The 100 push-ups signifies men and women that we've lost in combat in the 9-11, the World Trade Center. Uh, so it, 100 push-ups for that. And the 22 pull-ups is to bring awareness to the 22 veterans who take their lives every day, every single day. So again, our, our mission at, at Naked Warrior Recovery is 22 to zero to eliminate that veteran suicide statistic. Then we get back in the water. We swim to another barge that's in front of Ellis Island. That's about a three quarters of a mile swim. We get out. We do another 100 push-ups and 22 pull-ups. We jump back in the water. And this is the hard swim because People only think about the Hudson River. It's dirty. It's gross. It's whatever. It's, uh, yes, there is a fair amount of pollution in the water, but there's a lot of water moving. So I'm not, I wasn't really too concerned about what kind of bacteria or sludge or toxic waste might be in the river because there's so much water that moves. The first year that we, we did that swim, it took us two and a half hours longer to get across that stretch, that last mile and a quarter, mile and a half stretch because the currents were so strong. I was leading my, my swim buddy. And every time I looked up at this little white, I think it, it looks like a church from the water, looked at this church 
in the distance, it kept getting further away and we're swimming pretty hard. And finally, I'm like, Ray, we got to just put out and put our heads down and go. We were getting sucked down the East River, which would have been very bad and, and, and not possible for us to get back. We eventually got across the river, but, uh, but this year, the currents were timed just about right. Every year, I've offset the current in the wrong direction. Maybe next year, I'll help plan the tides and currents so that I know which direction is flooding or ebbing, so I know, know which way to cheat in the event that the, the current picks up and pushes the sand. Because if I... If you cheat and go the wrong way and the current is going in that direction, well, it's a lot harder to swim back against that current. So you get to, we got to lower Manhattan, we got out, we deconned the Hudson River off of us with, they had a decon station, showers, soap, we rinsed off, we changed back into our sneakers, we grabbed our flags and we ran to the 9-11 Memorial, we got out, uh, we, we set our flags up, and then we, we did more, uh, another 100 push-ups and 22 pull-ups. They had pull-up bars set up down there. Then we had a big ceremony. Then we took our flags, our little mini flags and our big flags down to the 9-11 Memorial. We put flags on the 9-11 Memorial and said a prayer, had a, a, a moment of silence, and then the event is over. Very cool event, very hard event. But let me talk about the entitlement that I was feeling prior to that event. So again, you guys know I'm a Navy SEAL. I spent 26 years in the SEAL teams and I hate swimming. I hate swimming. And when I tell people that, they're like, what? You're a Navy SEAL. You picked the wrong profession. I didn't hate swimming until I became a SEAL. And we did it so much in the SEAL teams. Every Monday morning was a two mile ocean swim. And uh, you just loaded up and you got in the buses with your wetsuits and fins and masks. And off you went two miles. Hop, when you were done, hop back in the bus, head back to the team, showered off and, uh, and got after it got after it for the day. I hate swimming. Most seals hate swimming. I know people won't believe that, but most seals hate swimming. But that is the thing that separates seals from every other service. We're the best in the water, the end. That doesn't mean we like it. We just do it because it's hard. And that's why I did. That's why I do this swim. I hate swimming. How do I keep myself accountable? I go do things that are hard, things that I don't really enjoy doing. That's how I keep myself accountable. But when I was doing the workup for this swim, I procrastinated a bit prior to, but the first day that I went out to do my first training swim in the ocean, I drove out to the beach. I got out of my truck. I walked down to the beach and I looked and I was like, yep, it's windy. It's choppy. It's not good conditions. I really don't want to swim today. I don't want to do it. I went back. I got back in my truck. I started scrolling social media. I came across one of my friends that lives here in Hawaii. Her name is Amber Latham. She does sales training. And she said something about like how awesome it is to live in Hawaii and have the opportunity to go be on some of the, the most beautiful beaches in the world and be in the most beautiful water in the world. And I was like, oh my God, I have to go swim right now. I can't, I, there's no excuse for me to not swim. I have to go get in the water right now and start swimming. So. As I was about to drive away, I turned my truck off, I grabbed my fins, went down to the water, I sucked it up, and I did my first swim. All of my swims are a minimum of one mile. My later swims, I would do a mile swim and then a mile run on land just to get my legs going in, in different capacities. But one of the things that a, a mentor of mine told me once upon a time and that I want to share with you is I tell you that I hate swimming. I'm not a swimmer. When I'm getting ready for that swim, when I'm getting ready to swim across the Hudson River, when I'm getting ready to do something hard, like swimming, I'm a swimmer. I'm the best damn swimmer on the planet. That's what I tell myself. If you want to change your behavior, if you want to change what you're doing, if you want six-pack abs, you have to say, I am an athlete. If you want to start waking up in the morning and attacking the day, you have to tell yourself, I'm a morning person. I'm a morning person. I did this thing with my daughter or my daughter actually taught me this indirectly, I don't know, a couple months ago. We were sitting out in the sauna, about 170, 180 degrees in there. And my daughter likes to get in there and hang out with me while I'm in there suffering and sweating. And she comes in there, she just wants to play. She wants to be by me, which is awesome. So she gets in the sauna with me and she said, I am cool. I am cool. I am cool. And I was like, Emily, what are you doing? She's like, I am cool. It's so cool in here. I'm like, Emily, are you cool in here? She's like, yes, it's so cool in here. 
And then she would leave the sauna and go get a beach towel, dip it in the pool, bring it back with cool water and kind of drape it over herself and say, I am cool. I shared that story with someone else and they shared with me that, yeah, that's a real thing. People do this all the time. Tony Robbins does this where at some of his events, they'll do fire walking. And so I guess one of the things that they say, I've never done the event, so I'm only speaking second or third hand. Maybe some of you guys have. He'll say something like, if you don't believe that your feet are cool, if you don't believe that you're walking across cool, moist moss, then your feet are going to burn. But if you believe that, you're walking, that your feet are cool while you're walking on these hot ashes, while you're walking across fire, if you believe that they are cool, then you're going to make it. You're going to make it across those hot coals and have no issue. Your feet are going to feel amazing. They're not going to burn. But the people, I guess what happened were the people who didn't really put the effort into really believing that their feet were cool, they got second, third degree burns on their feet. The people who believed, they changed their identity. I have cool feet. I have cool feet. Cool, moist, mossy feet. Walk slowly across those coals and had zero damage. So there's definitely something to the power of your mind. So when you think about, if you want to change your behavior, you have to change your identity. You have to become the swimmer. You have to become the runner. You have to become the athlete. You have to become Mr. Olympia if that's what you want to be. If you want to be the morning person, if you want to be the millionaire, the hundred millionaire, the billionaire, you have to believe that you can have that. You have to manifest it. You have to put it in your mind in such a way to make it happen. It doesn't happen by not doing it. It happens because you want it. You want it more than anything else in the world. It does not mean that it's going to be easy. It just means that that is your identity now. You have to become that identity. When I was becoming a Navy SEAL, there was nothing else in my mind that I ever wanted to do other than to become a Navy SEAL. I didn't show up to Navy SEAL training, up to BUDS, to not make it. And that's what I told everyone. They're like, are you going to make it? I said, I didn't show up here to not. I'll either go out the front door with a graduation certificate or I'll go out in a body bag. Either way, I'm not leaving here until I'm done. You have to have that mindset whenever you're going to do anything. But coming back to this sort of entitlement thing that I had, so I went out and I did this run, swim across the Hudson River. Two-mile run was super easy. Three-mile swim, not easy. Push-ups and pull-ups, easy enough. Although the more you swam, the harder the pull-ups and push-ups got. They, they definitely worked against you while swimming and the swimming worked against the push-ups and pull-ups. They did get harder over time, but uh, I became a swimmer, even though I hate swimming. I, the, the next challenge I'm going to do is I, I did this challenge earlier this year. It was the top five hardest challenges I've ever done in my life to include hell week in seal training was the grand Canyon rim to rim to rim. So we started the South rim. We hiked to the bottom across to the top of the North rim, turn around, hike to the bottom, come back across and hike out. I'll tell you the last nine miles coming out of the Grand Canyon, hardest thing I've ever done, I think, in my life. I went to some dark places. It was very difficult. It was, I really had a big pity party, and I'm going to go do it again. And you know why? Because we didn't finish it. We didn't make it to the North Rim when we did it back in the spring. We didn't do it. We didn't make it to the North Rim because there was eight and a half feet of snow on the ground. We started getting into some altitude and we were running out of time. So we took us about a, an hour to go a quarter mile. We turned back about a half mile from the top because we just weren't going to make it back in time. And we had guys down low. We saved the guy's life. Cool event. But if you want to join me on this event, go to manmade. I think it's man-made.org. Sign up for it. It's not super expensive. There's a, there's a small financial piece of it that helps pay for the guide and things like that. Sign up for it. You'll potentially be have a, get a phone call from me when you do, and uh, let's go let's go crush this thing together. But there there will, be, there will be some prerequisites. We need to know that you're physically fit in order to do it. It's n it is not an easy easy task. But coming back to entitlement, why I was entitled or I was feeling entitled after this event. So a lot of us we go out and we do something hard. Sometimes we do it on purpose. Sometimes we do it accidentally. This particular event, this swim. It was a lot of work, working up, doing all the swims that I did, 
I think I swam four, four to five days a week prior to and, and ran almost as many days, not long runs, only a mile or so. And then I had all sorts of like weird calf issues that I haven't had for a long time. Yeah, everything started falling apart. So I had to take it easy as I was finishing my training to go do the swim. When I got home from the swim, I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to take today off. So I took the day off. The next day, oh, I'm going to take today off again. I earned it. I deserve the time off. Then the third day came along. Yeah, I don't really feel like going for a run or working out or doing anything. And then I caught myself. I was like, I'm being entitled. I'm like, I'm being the person that I say don't be. So I had to catch myself and realize what I was doing so that I could stop doing that. I didn't realize it at the time. I was like, but we all, but the lesson here is we all do it. We all feel entitled. We all feel like we deserve more time off. We all feel like we should get more money. We all feel like world, the world is against us. Life isn't fair. You're right. It's not fair. It's not supposed to be fair. Life is supposed to be hard. The harder you make your own life, the easier it will be when life truly gets hard. When you're used to this discomfort, they have these, these sayings out there, embrace the suck or get comfortable being uncomfortable. Those sayings are there for a reason. Because if you're so busy trying to be comfortable all the time, we're not supposed to be comfortable. We are animals. We're not supposed to be comfortable. We seek out comfort because it's comfortable. And there's nothing wrong with seeking out comfort when you're done working. There's nothing wrong with taking that recovery day. But again, you got to earn it. And generally, most of us, at present company included, we seek it out before we actually earned it. I earned one day off, maybe two. I didn't earn three or more days. No way in hell. My job is now, so now I have a new mission. My old mission was swim across the Hudson River. My new mission that I have to get ready for is the Grand Canyon rim to rim to rim, the Grand Canyon R3. It's going to be hard. I know it's going to be hard because I did it less than six months ago. I'm in no better shape now than I was then. But what, one of the cool things that happened when I did that event and I was training up to do that event, prior to starting the training process for that, if I ran three miles, I thought that was a good long run. I'm 49 years old. I thought that was a great workout. Now, my workout, I don't, the runs that I do, the minimum is five miles and the average is seven. So what happened is as I was training for an event, something that's going to be very hard, I expanded my capacity. I can do so much more than I actually believe that, that I can. I learned that in SEAL training and I learned it over and over and over because I would come back and I'm like, okay, let's go on to the next thing. I did something really hard. Rather than focusing on continuing to do those kind of hard things, I will switch and do something different. Climbing a mountain, same thing. When I climbed the Grand Teton, I thought I was in super good shape. I was climbing these mountains around here, around my house. Um, but again, I live at sea level with 30, 40 pounds on my back, 45 pounds, and body armor. And I was strong, but the altitude kicked my ass. Altitude was the great equalizer. So even though I was plenty strong, I was stronger than almost everyone on that trip, they all had an advantage on me because they lived at altitude and they were in good shape. I encourage you to go out and go do really hard things. Go do things that really push your capacity, expand your capacity much farther than what you believe it truly is. Expand your capacity, do the things that are really hard. And when you're done with them, take a day, maybe two days off, and then go back and do something hard again. because. There is no entitlement. There's no reason to feel entitled any time in your life. You should not feel entitled. You should feel like, what else can I do to get better? Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Again, my name is William Branham. This is the Navy SEAL Mindset. 
Don't get entitled. Do not believe in entitlement. Entitlement sucks. Go out there. Don't forget to get naked. And I'll talk to you soon. Hey, this is William Branham, retired Navy SEAL, 26 years of service. And I have a free gift for you. Go to 5sealsecrets.com. The number 5, SEAL, as in Navy SEAL, 5sealsecrets.com. Go download your free copy of these five SEAL secrets, and I'll give you a, a secret. The secret is NAKED. NAKED is an acronym. Uh, go over there and find out what it is. FiveSealSecrets.com. Totally free. All you got to do is give me your name and email so I can send that to you, and uh, it's all yours. Then you can start learning how to think like a Navy SEAL. Talk to you guys soon.